That is five goals in 17 minutes of game time to the Ds. Maybe the most devastating burst we've seen in the competition so far. Will it be enough? Collingwood still have a say. White sends the kick forward. Downey bought herself some time and was taken out of the contest by Casey. And that may involve a date. The MRP for Sophie Casey, who we know is renowned for a tough style of footy. And I think Downey's still on the ground after that hit. Such an important play for the Ds in defence from the St Kilda Sharks, as Jace mentioned before, started her footy at Bullen Bullen down in the Allenbank League, playing up until under-13s. Medico's on the scene and indicating that they need the stretcher out. We'll see contest here. She tapped the ball away and looks like she actually lost her footing, just bobbled on that ankle, so she was certainly exposed and Casey making contact, so stretch her out on the ground and this will stop the game clock, just shy of 10 minutes of playing time remaining. We take stock on a night where Collingwood owned the opening half of the match. Four goals to one at halftime, they led by 19 points, Mo Hope kicking one of those goals and then out of nowhere seemingly Melbourne with four goals in nine minutes in that third quarter including two to Cat Phillips as we see the contact front on here is Sort of losing of her footing for Meg Downey actually lowered her, her face into the harm's way of Casey as she came through. Meg Downey grew up in a dairy farm in Gippsland with three brothers, Bull Bull. Went to the footy club at age 10. She wanted to play footy. Did so for four years until she got too old. Couldn't play with the boys any longer. She moved to Melbourne at age 19, joined Eastern Devils, who were East Burwood at the time. Played four years for the Devils, then focused on her career at ANZ. Came back to footy. Had a hamstring for all of 2016. So today's just her third game in four years for Meg Downey. So, Katie, team's going to their huddles. Time to take stock. If you're in the Melbourne camp and you're Daisy Pierce, what's the message right now as we see Collingwood trying to work out how they turn this two goal margin around? Well, they had the experience from last week with the lightning strike and, and having to. Uh, stop play and, and reassess. So I think they would have learnt from, from last week and everything that happened. And, and Daisy would just be saying, keep doing what we're doing, keep being first to the contest, keep being hard at the football and, and you know, keep pushing it forward into that forward line. Um, they really need to get another goal on the board just to secure this, this win. Um, and, you know, I think Daisy will be leading from the front to do that. We've seen in your Bulldogs game so far, quite often you've had the ball in hand and we see that hand motion to talk about trying to slow the game down and take the pace out of it. How conscious do you think Melbourne players are going to be of the clock now? Imagine it's going to be something that's communicated to them. Who are the players around the ground that you see being really important to try and have some calm? Because it has to be said, for all the experience we've spoken about in the Melbourne squad, they've got about half a dozen players who are under the age of 20 who are playing at this level for the first time and, and really need some leadership put around them. Yes, certainly, and, and they'll need to, to really slow it down and play tempo footy and, and just take some time off the clock. Um, you know, throw up some, gr gl throw up some grass and, and pull your socks up when you when you take a shot at goal, but I think the players to do that will be the Melissa Hickeys, the um, Karen Paxmans, the Daisy Pierce that will be really leading from the front and, and encouraging those younger girls to do so. We've seen that Lily Mithin is stepping up in this game and, and some of those youngsters um, are, you know, are taking the lead from, from those, um, you know, their captains. So I think um, Melbourne can can really lift here and, and control the football and, and be really measured with their approach to goal. So, Meg Downey has the neck brace on, have been extremely cautious with her, the medical staff take her straight off the field for further assessment. There, Ray Clifford goes over to give her words of encouragement. Structurally, this is important for Melbourne, Jace, not to take the focus off the injury, but Meg Downey's work in defence for Melbourne tonight has been really important, particularly as that drop-off player in front of Mo Hope from time to time. 